All right, so today we're going to talk about that 562 I was fucking around with this week. <clears throat> and I got it finished up, and dummy me, I took it home, and it ain't here with us anymore. But uh, what I had to do was uh, bottom end work on it, replace the bearings. Usually, you know, most people will uh, just like switch the short block that Husky's offering now for like two, like 200 bucks or something like that. <clears throat> but they're on back order, and I wanted to fuck around with them anyways. I've never really done any. Uh, bearing replacements in those before, and they're pretty failure prone. Uh, like the earlier 562s, the 550 Mark Ones. Uh, yeah, they're just they all blow up bearings. I mean, that thing had only had 40 hours on it, and 20 20 of those hours was at idle. So, I guess that's what happens if you run a dull chain with them. I mean, they're uh, they're they'll blow right the fuck up, you know. So there's a couple things I learned. Um, you know, we've been a Husky dealer. I opened, I think I picked up the Husky line in 2020. Um, I'm not like a super high volume repair, uh, when it comes to it. And a lot of times these repairs, uh, you know, they're not worth it to the customer. They'd rather just have a new saw cause they got a saw that's kind of beat up and then it needs bottom end work. And then they're, they're kind of averse to, to doing it or, you know, especially like on those earlier five fifties, it just, you know, you're going to have like two, three hundred dollars in parts and then, you know, 80 to, I don't know, $160 in labor. And then if you find anything else in there, and a lot of times it is a compounded issue, you know, you burn up the bottom end, you burn up the top end. And at that juncture, it's not worth it. So I don't really get a lot of opportunity to fuck around with the bottom ends on them, but uh, I've been kind of laying in wait and, uh, you know, hoping that something comes in that I could you know, talk somebody out of, and, uh, you know, a guy come in last week, and uh, he want, you know, he had one that was blown up, and, you know, offered him some trade on it, and we were both happy with the deal, so I ended up getting it, and uh, fucking around with it, and just to give you an idea of what the bearings look like, um, so this is the flywheel side bearing, and it, it was... Okay, it's still kind of crunchy. I don't know if you can hear it. But it ain't great. It ain't in great shape. And then here, here's the PTO side bearing. And that thing is, there we go. That thing is fucked. It ate the, uh, it must have ate the seal. Because I guess there was a run of them that had the, uh, uh, some seal issues. Some seal installation issues from the manufacturer. So it would eat the seal and then the, the bearing cage is plastic. And then I found the, the remaining pieces of everything. It was uh, that in the, in the crankcase stuffers. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that, that's a failure right there. So interestingly enough, I was messing around and uh, these bearings, this is a 6202 which is kind of a standard chainsaw bearing. Steel uses them in uh, a lot of their flywheel side bearings, and then Husqvarna uses them in the, a lot of their saws, 372s, the 272s. The, uh, I think the 55s even have them. That's why they got pretty stout bottom end. They're using 6202s, which are good enough for 70cc saws. But, uh, yeah, 6202 is a real common bearing that you see. Well, this here... Is the same dimensions. Dimensionally, they're exactly the same. The same, uh, same width, same outside diameter, same inside diameter. With the main difference being the bearing race, like the groove that the balls sit in on the 6202 is like right in the middle of the bearing. Where these ones, the, the Husky 562, and I think they use them in the other models too. This is the PTO bearing. It's actually the, the groove is offset in the bottom third of the bearing itself. And I think the point of that is, so like for these, normally the seal would just sit, uh, it doesn't sit around the bearing, it would just sit on top of the bearing. But on these, the sealing surface is actually the inner race. And then the same with, with the flywheel side bearing. So you see this, this is actually the sealing surface. Instead of the crankshaft itself, it's the race. I don't know why they chose to go that way, but... Um, that's the way that it is. Now, this was the PTO side bearing. That garter spring was actually still in it, but there was like chunk chunks of it, chunks of the seal missing. 
And I don't know if the race went first and then it took the seal out with it, but there is a service bulletin about the seals coming out. Um, the seals coming out with the uh, with the bearing, and then this is the flywheel side seal, and then you see how it fits around that. So that's kind of how it in the case how it would get assembled. Whenever you buy the flywheel side bearing, it comes as a bearing and the seal you have to get separate. But whenever you buy the PTO side, the bearing, uh, the seal is actually installed on the bearing. So there you go. And I believe this is what is called a uh, 3023 bearing. Now I can't say for certain if you buy a sealed 3023 bearing, if it'll fit your machine or not, but I believe so. It's an SKF three zero two BB one three zero two three EF. You have to be careful though with the five sixty twos. They did change. I believe they changed the flywheel side bearing and seal setup on the later models and offered like a seal protector because some of the seals were getting taken out. Another interesting caveat that I noticed about the five sixty two was that the um, that's, that's really out of the ordinary for Husqvarna is that the wiring harness um, that goes up into the airbox from the coil is actually behind the flywheel. And typically, you don't see that on the Husky saws. It usually comes around the outside of the case or goes up inside that little fan shroud. Another interesting caveat that I learned about them, because I don't see a lot of these in here, and then since the updates were made, I think in like through like 18, 19, and 20, and we picked up the Husky line in, um, in uh, I think, yeah, 2000, late 2020, we haven't seen a lot of these repairs coming through. But this is the old, they, they updated the oil pump, the sprocket, and the worm gear, because um, if you if you look at this, and I don't have the worm gear here, I pitched it, but look at the like the these engagement parts. I guess they weren't getting enough engagement in the worm gear itself, and then it would slip, and then it would start stripping. So the new the new setup, and I'm not a hundred percent certain with what the. Um, the differences are in the oil pump. Maybe we could look at it now and see if there's any physical differences in them. So this is the, the, the new one. This would be the new updated one, and this is the older one. And I don't see any major physical difference in them outside of the material. This is like a black plastic, and then this is a like a you know beige colored nylon. But I can't I can't say for certain what the what the major differences are in them. Maybe it's just an updated you know material or something like that. But where you see the major difference is the sprocket. So what they opted to do with this kit. Let's kind of go back to the old way where the splines for the rim engage the worm instead of having like a separate spline here because you only had three engagement points one two three so if you slip one of them you know you're already going up the road there you know if you slip one of these it's it's just not enough but with this you've got seven splines engaging at all times so the, the chances of, of slip are going to be, you know, significantly less. So that's that's it. It's sold as a kit. You can get the worm gear, a new uh, sprocket, a new rim, a new bearing, and a new oil pump. It all comes as one set. So that's what I ended up putting on it because it's like hell while I'm in here. Because the worm gear was fucked up on there. So I figure I'd just put the, uh, put the, the whole new setup on there and just be done with it. Because I'm actually going to use it for my own personal use and firewood cutting and stuff, so. 
Now let's get the sound of that pour. I bought one of these French presses probably like last year. Man, you get some good tasting coffee out of it as opposed to the drip machine. Keurig socks. Um, they, you can't get anything good out of that. Um, so I ended up going with this, with this French press and it's something that even if you go out of town, you could take it with you. And I, I think, I think when I went to Mark's house, when I went to, uh, or Mark Hyman's place and I had brought it with me, he laughed. He says, what, who's the coffee snob? But I mean, really, frankly, it just, it gives you a good cup wherever you go and they're, and they're portable and they're simple. And they don't require any real mechanics or anything like that or electricity. You just put the hot water in there, and there you go. So the other uh, thing that I kind of talked about in the last video... All right, so back into this thing here. It's the air filter. These things are really a common failure area for these and then husky sent like out sent out an updated kit for these because you get a lot of leakage and whenever i uh, first took this apart there was all kind of shit down in down in here you could see all kind of fines getting in and then as that gets into the bearings over time it'll destroy them friction you know it's just like a like a paper style filter and it's okay if you're like in really clean cutting conditions, but if you're if you end up cutting with a dull chain, and you're heating that, you know you're <clears throat> you're heating that clutch side up, and then you're getting fines past the filter. It's like a double whammy. Oh, the other thing on that <laughs> five sixty two, I'd replace replace those clutch springs too because they were, I guess they were trying to run it with that bearings with that bearing messed up, and it was just creating a lot of heat. So this is the updated filter kit. So it's a similar similar filter housing. And then here's here's the updated filter. And then the ceiling surface actually has like a you know rubber. And you get a much better seal. And you really gotta push it down and make it click before that filter will engage. They offer it two different ways. They offer it just the air filter, and then they offer it with a newer, updated uh, air filter cover um, that um, allows for a little bit better cooling. So those are some of the caveats with the 562 that we found out. Also, one of the things you'll want to make sure of that uh, when I was putting it back together, I'm, I'm going to vacuum pressure test it and make sure everything's sealed up. It's just like the crankcase and uh, uh, the cylinder assembled, and I couldn't get any pressure in the thing. All right, back at it. So one of the things that I, I'm trying to get pressure out of this fucking thing, and I couldn't get nothing out of it. So I'm checking all the spots, you know, make sure I got the plates on there right, checking the decomp, doing this, doing that. As it turned out, um, I hadn't assembled the oil pump, and uh, the, two, the two screws that hold the oil pump in... Um, also go into the crankcase. So they, they need to be there in order for the case to seal. So if you're ever in a situation where you've got a partially assembled 562, um, make sure that you got it and you can't get it to build pressure. Um, that might be one of the areas that you want to check. So really that's kind of it. And what I think is the end of the line of the discussion with the 562 at least for this period of time. And uh, this is the piston also that was damaged. I replaced it. But uh, I don't think it's actually scored. I think that this is just some debris from those cages and stuff. Because I couldn't find any transfer on the cylinder. So we just, you know, ran a little uh, 400 grit through there and that's the end of it. And you can't even hang a fingernail on this hardly. So I think it's just like some smeared crap. So that's it. That's all I got.